From where it started in the Shire, to where it ended at Mount Doom, the wandering passed by many peoples and through many lands. Throughout the journey, it was in close proximity to dozens of different people, and in particular, all members of the Fellowship of the Ring had weeks or even months of exposure to it. But there was only one person who fell victim to the One Ring's corruption other than Frodo himself, and that was Boromir, Captain of Gondor. So in this video, let's answer this question. Why was Boromir the only person to be corrupted by the One Ring? Boromir has quite a large fan base. He's one of the most human characters in the story, and many people can relate to his love of his homeland, his people, and the lengths he'd go to defend them. But there's also a portion of the fan base that misunderstand him, and that's not really surprising. In the theatrical version of Peter Jackson's films, Boromir comes across as far less sympathetic than he does in the extended edition of the films. So if you haven't read the books, you might get the impression that Boromir was corrupted because he was weak or slightly evil or selfish. This isn't true. To understand how Boromir was corrupted, you have to understand how the One Ring corrupts people. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically the One Ring preys on someone's vulnerabilities, a weakness in their character that can be exploited, something they love, something they hate, something they're insecure about, something they desire. What the One Ring does is offer itself as a solution to a person's problem or a way in which they can further their goals. The effectiveness often depends on the person's willpower and their natural character. For example, Smeagol was instantly corrupted because he already had evil in his heart when he was exposed to the One Ring. On the other hand, Bilbo had the One Ring in his possession for 60 years and avoided being corrupted due to his compassion and the relative lack of ambition and surprising willpower that hobbits innately have. So out of all the people the One Ring came into contact with, Boromir simply had the biggest vulnerabilities, and those vulnerabilities were exactly what I mentioned earlier. The very things that make him relatable, his love for his homeland, his love for his people, and his willingness to defend them. These are admirable traits, but they're also vulnerabilities that the One Ring preys upon. And this comes out when Boromir tries to take the One Ring from Frodo. He rants about using the One Ring to save Gondor, to unite all men as a great leader, and to ultimately defeat Sauron. The One Ring uses Boromir's love and insecurities to delude him into thinking he could use it to save his people, which simply isn't true. It's not that Boromir was weak or evil, he certainly wasn't, it's just that his characteristics were far more exploitable than his companions. But why just Boromir? Why not anyone else? Well, let's do some process of elimination, and you can see why no one else was corrupted by the One Ring before Boromir was. Firstly, it's worth noting that the One Ring doesn't seem to be able to corrupt you if you are unaware of its presence. So, in that sense, it's like a two-way street. You need to be thinking about the One Ring before it can really start influencing you. So when Frodo had the One Ring during his stay at the Prancing Pony, there were shady individuals about who the One Ring would likely corrupt very quickly, but they weren't aware of it, therefore it couldn't work on them. Secondly, the other populated places Frodo takes the One Ring to outside Bree are Rivendell and Lothlorien, places populated by elves. Now, it's very likely that in both of these places, especially Rivendell, there were a lot of people around who knew about the One Ring's presence. The simple fact with elves is that they're much more difficult to corrupt than other races. Tolkien states many times that no elf serves evil willingly. On average, elves are also far wiser than men, and are less likely to have impulses that the One Ring can exploit. That's not to say that the One Ring wouldn't eventually corrupt an elf, because it would, but it would be a lot more difficult and would presumably take a very long time. Alright, what about people the One Ring gets right up close and personal with? We're talking members of the Fellowship, and let's start with the Hobbits. The thing with Hobbits is that they're almost perfect candidates to carry the One Ring. They don't really have any exploitable ambitions, and all they really love is eating food and being happy. There aren't any easy avenues for the One Ring to start digging its claws into. There are exceptions of course, like Smeagol who was fond of being a dick even before he got the One Ring, but the Hobbits of the Fellowship were not like Smeagol. A great example is when Sam is briefly carrying the One Ring in Mordor. It shows him visions of him conquering Mordor and turning it into a giant garden. You know, because Sam likes gardening. Unfortunately for the One Ring, Sam has good old fashioned hobbit sense and can see right through the delusion. It's very likely Merry and Pippin would be able to do the same. 
The fact is, the One Ring, as an extension of Sauron's will and power, doesn't really understand hobbits because Sauron himself doesn't understand hobbits. And how can you corrupt something that you don't really understand? Okay, so the hobbits are a no-go, but what about another vertically challenged member of the Fellowship, Gimli? Well, Gimli is also highly resistant to corruption on account of being a dwarf. The race of dwarves are naturally highly resistant to corruption and domination, best demonstrated when Sauron gave them seven rings of power. Unlike men, the dwarves were little affected, and the only known negative side effect is that it amplified their greed and lust for wealth. Speaking of greed, shouldn't that be a fairly easy trait for the One Ring to exploit? Well, yes, but Gimli doesn't really exhibit any signs of being greedy during the journey. In fact, he comes across as stoic and highly focused, and repeatedly demonstrates positive traits such as courage and loyalty. So if you combine his steadfast personality and his natural dwarven resistance, Gimli is a poor candidate for corruption. Five members down, what about Legolas? Well, this one's easy. As I said earlier, elves, like dwarves, are highly resistant to the corruption of evil. And like Gimli, Legolas did not have any characteristics that the One Ring could easily exploit. His outlook was usually very cheerful, he showed no signs of great personal ambition, and he was quick to get along with almost anyone he encountered. He even managed to befriend Gimli. Long story short, Legolas was also an incredibly poor candidate for corruption. The last two remaining members of the Fellowship are Gandalf and Aragorn, but let's talk about Gandalf first. Although Gandalf has the ability to wield great power, he doesn't desire it. In fact, a recurring aspect of Gandalf's character is a rejection of power. It's why he stayed faithful to the cause of the Istari, whereas, for example, Saruman did not. However, Gandalf does have vulnerabilities that the One Ring could exploit, a pity for weakness and a desire of the strength to do good, which isn't really too dissimilar from Boromir. But Gandalf has some advantages over Boromir. He's extremely wise and understands the true nature of the One Ring more than anyone else, that it ultimately cannot be used to do good, something that Boromir does not understand. Even though his power is lessened, as one of the Maya, he would still possess an incredible amount of willpower, so even if the One Ring is reaching out to him, he would be able to identify and see through the delusions. So while Gandalf does have vulnerabilities that the One Ring could exploit, he also has an extra set of defenses that Boromir did not have. Finally, let's talk about Aragorn. As we know, men are far less resistant to the corruption of evil compared to other races, and even though Aragorn is quite exceptional, he is still just a man. He too comes with his own set of vulnerabilities. He's determined to become King of Gondor and Arnor, not necessarily out of a desire for power, but because those are the conditions required for him to marry Arwen. Love is obviously a positive emotion, but it's still exploitable. Love can cause people to go to extreme lengths. Like Boromir, he also has a desire to protect people, and he knows that if he is to become king, he must unite people and defeat Sauron. So considering he is saddled with similar vulnerabilities, why did Aragorn not fall instead of Boromir? Well, like Gandalf, Aragorn has some advantages over Boromir. He's older, far more experienced, far more learned, and far more wiser than Boromir. Although they are both descended from Numenor, Aragorn retains far more of its heritage, meaning he is innately stronger willed than Boromir and more difficult to corrupt or dominate. Unlike Boromir, he's also spent time with Gollum, so he knows firsthand what the One Ring can do to someone. So like Gandalf, Aragorn is by no means immune to corruption, but he has a much stronger base to help stave it away. Perhaps if the Fellowship made it into Mordor, Aragorn might have been the next to fall victim, but that's just speculation and by no means true. There is one more character that Boromir can be very closely compared to, and that is another character who rejected the One Ring. Faramir, his own brother. So, why did Faramir wholeheartedly reject to take the One Ring when Boromir could not? Firstly, and most obviously, Faramir had very limited exposure to the One Ring, not even a full day. But there are other reasons as well. Whereas Boromir inherited the martial aspect of Numenor, Faramir inherited much of its ancient wisdom. Faramir was rather introspective, uninterested in glory and warfare, and only taking part because he had to. He loved ancient Numenor not for its power, but for its wisdom and beauty. To put it simply, Faramir had no predisposition that would lend him towards wanting to take the One Ring for himself, so in the short amount of time he spent with it, he was easily able to reject it. 
So, it becomes kind of clear why Boromir was the first member of the Fellowship to fall victim to the influence of the One Ring. He was the character with the most exploitable vulnerabilities, and also had the most pressing need, the greatest desire to use it. That's not to say he was the weakest link in the Fellowship. Everyone had their role to play, and Boromir was important. He was valiant and steadfast, and perhaps the Fellowship might have perished at certain points if not for his physical strength. But he was the most susceptible to the One Ring's influence. And unlike others, he was not as well equipped to deal with it. It feels fitting to end this video with a quote from Faramir. Alas for Boromir, it was too sore a trial. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. I don't really have much else to say, so cheers, farewell, and remember, don't feel bad for Boromir, the One Ring would have corrupted you way quicker.